Hey guys, Harry here, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. And I'm standing in front of another picture. Let's see if we can find a different one. I want, I want that one. That one. There we go. That looks cool. The flaming skull thing. I'll have to see if I can Google what they are. But yes, welcome along back to the Stanley Parable. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Yes, it was. So, uh, let's go this way. Door choice. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so we're going to kind of partly do what he says, but then see what other endings we can get to. So there's a room there. Again, I don't know why it doesn't render with me just for that trunk there. Hmm, very strange, right. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Or did we? I don't know if this bit is finished yet. I'm not quite sure. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. Mm. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. Hmm. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Minecraft logic. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply true. repeating? Hmm. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. Mm -hmm. I'm dreaming! He yelled, this is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. Just really quickly. Um, oh, no, I don't think I can turn that off. He just wasn't in case. going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. Mm -hmm. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Yeah. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Ooh. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it Whoa. too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled I'm that flying. he'd still not woken up. Oh. How was he remaining okay. so lucid? And then perhaps Ooh. the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. Okay. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Yeah. Why is there a voice in my head oh, dictating yeah. mm. everything that I'm doing and thinking? And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if then. he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? Yeah. How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, yeah. if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, okay. and That's he invited close. himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, mm. the press of the mattress on his back, mm -hmm. the fresh air of a world outside this one. Yeah. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. 
Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife mm -hmm. and my job. Mm -hmm. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. Mm -hmm. My life is normal. I am normal. That is true. Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. I am okay. Awake. <gasps> Stanley began screaming. Oh, please, actually, yeah. someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. Bridge, save me. I have a boss. Oh. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can Quick, anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Hmm. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I'm guessing that's the end? I think that was the end anyway. We'll just break out here. Um, wow. There's a lot of redstone bits here, isn't there? Whoa, I think that was the end. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it just teleports you to a random... A random... A random block here that's... It's like, yeah, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Oh, okay. What's that one? Okay. Is, is, let me just place it and see whether it teleports me back. Yes, it does teleport me back into here. So that was it. Wow. And then this one also teleports too. Okay. That was um, certainly different. So this is the map, by the way, um, if you're wondering what the outside looks like. Everything is run off um, redstone repeaters. Uh, obviously, it's not very difficult, but the thing is, it's done so that, obviously, they tick very, very slowly until it actually gets to that point. And timed it correctly, which is really awesome. Um, this is where the line went. Okay. So that we were just inside here. Aha. Uh -huh. See? And then you just jump back out again. So, yes. Um, if you did enjoy that episode, then make sure you leave a like. I think that's where we started. Is this where we started? Ah, uh, yeah. I think this is where we started. Let me just check. Um, oh. Oh, oh, I think this is um an old ending. Ah, I think this is um not an ending, an old uh, start. But yeah, this map is very, very large because they kind of copied everything out. Um, wow, yeah. So that was the Stanley Parable, uh, a different ending. Um, but yes, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Um, subscribe if you haven't already because I'm making mo loads more videos and stuff like this. Let's get rid of that redstone repeater. Um, yeah, visit our website, messabouts.co.uk, where I do a whole load more stuff. Um, I will be posting to Messabouts Extra at some point. I'm not quite sure when. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching this video, and I shall see you next time.